And he said, no, you can't. I'm calling the police. And I was like, wait, what? What? I'm leaving. Just chill out, man. So basically, I was kicked out of the synagogue, of the only synagogue here in Birobijan. Exciting video coming up today. Let me check out of this hotel and I will tell you all about it. All right, so guys, welcome to a brand new video and... Oh, it's minus 30 in the street. You know what? I'll go back to my hotel room in order to film the intro, if you don't mind. All right, so story time. Back when I was in high school, when all of my classmates were busy having sex and taking all sorts of experimental drugs, I would spend entire nights reading Wikipedia articles about the far most regions and federal subjects of Russia. Kamchatka, up there in the Arctic, Vladivostok, in the Russian Far East, Chukotka, you name it. And one federal subject in particular that always sparked my interest was the Jewish Autonomous Region in the Russian Far East. Apparently, it was set up by Stalin in order to resettle most of the Jewish population of the Soviet Union. We've all got our weird fetishes, so don't you dare judge me, right? And anyway, since I'm an adult now, I just so happen to be in Khabarovsk in the Russian Far East. And I'm just like a couple of hours away from the Jewish Autonomous Region. So I thought I would set up a GOAL for today, a goal of trying to visit Birobijan, the capital of the Jewish Autonomous Oblast. So let's go there, let's see if we can meet some Jewish people of Siberia, let's Let's learn some Yiddish and let's just generally get a feel of life in the Jewish Autonomous Oblast of Russia. All right, now I can check out. All righty, the railway station is just a 10 minute walk from the hotel. Considering the temperature, these might very well be the longest 10 minutes of my life. Ooh. Okay, so I was checking the schedule early on and apparently the train that I should be on in order to get to Birobijan is the number 61 going from Vladivostok all the way to Moscow. The Trans-Siberian train. It's just that I will be on it for a couple of hours. However, the bad thing, bad news, is that it's late. So there's an hour delay, which is a bit of a shame. I was supposed to leave in around 20 minutes at 8.20, but instead it looks like I will have to wait up until 9.20 at the very least. Здравствуйте. Подскажите, я хочу в Биробиджан и на ближайшее, наверное, Владивосток, Москва, да, который опоздает. Вам что нужно? Купе, плацкарт, дорого, дешево. Дешевле, наверное. Вагон-ресторан есть все равно, да? Да. Ну, хорошо, тогда плацкарт. Давайте паспорт. Да. А странно, что опаздывают поезда. В три года России никогда ни один поезд опаздывал. А прямо сегодня. Ну, спасибо вам большое. До свидания. The one hour delay of my train gives me the perfect spot to tell you a bit more about the history of the Jewish Autonomous Oblast. It was set up under Stalin in 1934 as part of a policy to provide minority nationalities within the Soviet Union with territories in which they could pursue their cultural heritage. The Jewish population in the region peaked at around 46 to 50,000 Jews in 1948 before most of them started emigrating from the Soviet Union to Israel and other destinations. The remaining Jews now constitute less than 2% of the local population. Dang, it's a bit chilly, isn't it? What I don't know what was up with the guy there, with the Pravadnik, with the train conductor. He was saying something like, look, I don't have your name on my cell phone, so that means that you don't have a ticket. And I was showing my ticket to him, and he was like, no, your name should be on my phone, because I have a list. And I was like, okay, maybe I just bought the ticket like an hour ago and that's maybe why. But he was really adamant in not letting me on this train. Fortunately, after a hot reset of his phone, my name popped up, which was good. Alrighty, so we just left at 15 to 10 and we should have left 
like an hour and a half ago but it doesn't matter what I'm going to do now I'm just waiting for the Pravarnik to come again for the second check of my passport which they always do and then I will head to the restaurant carriage just to have some breakfast right Nope, she doesn't know that. This is second class. Looks much nicer, doesn't it? Well, it looks like we made it in the end. This is the entrance to the uh, Vagor Restaurant, the restaurant carriage. It's open every day from 8 o'clock until 11 o'clock in the evening. Well, I think I might very well spend the next couple of hours on this carriage right here, just because it looks so nice with this nice view outside of the train. Man, it feels nice to travel on Vladivostok to Moscow trains, right? And here are the menus. We've got some food menu and a wine list even. So I'm not quite sure what I want, but what I'm sure of is that I want a lot of food because I'm starving. Здравствуйте, можно, пожалуйста, вот это блинчики с чем и чай. Спасибо вам большое. Oh, and by the way, such a nice touch. The menu is in two languages, Russian and English. They even have English. You would never believe it, right? Right, so they're not bringing everything at the same time. So for the moment, I've got the sandwich with cheese and butter and the omelette with ham and an insane amount of dill, which I will have to very carefully take out of my plate Ugh. I can't stand deal as you guys know <laughs> that was good that was good they're refilling and I am now ready to take on the Jewish autonomous oblast landing there in about half an hour's time yeah it's Italy Italy Знаете? Рим Рим но я не из Рима as an Italian who's spent extensive time in Russia, I've been associated with many Italian symbols and celebrities before. As soon as I tell someone about where I'm from, people try and surprise me with their knowledge about Berlusconi, Albena, Del Piera and many other Italian icons. Never before, however, had someone mentioned the name of Julius freaking Caesar. Caesar? No, he's not more than you live, I think. He's died 2000 years ago. Ну да, он, он итальянец. А... Сейчас я хочу посмотреть Биробиджан. Биробиджан. Даже, даже не смотри. Думаете, оно мне интересно. У, у них интересная история. Знаешь, эта история была при Сталине. Да, а, да, а Сталин сейчас, устроил. Сейчас евреев там нет. Да, ну может есть музей, синагога, церкви, не знаю. У вас, наверное, по желанию, да, служит? Это ты наш враг, Натовец. Ната, да? Натовец. Он враг, ты посмотри на него. Давай, Давид. Да, я тебя желаю всего самого лучшего, хорошего. Интересный мне. Нам тоже. В Россию изучаешь. В Россию запомни вот таких вот чуваков, которые такие вы. Слава вам, удачи. Well, guys, two minutes and we will be landing in Birobijan, the capital of the Jewish Autonomous Oblast. Ooh, hello, Birobijan! And I hope you guys can have a nice continuation to Moscow when you eventually get there in seven days' time. Now, the fact that everyone is going that way is making me think that I'm supposed to go that way towards the exit as well. Well, I already know that this day will probably end up like that time in Izhevsk when we went looking for red-haired Russians in Udmurtia, but we didn't find any. And considering that the population of the Jewish Autonomous Okrug is Jewish just for the 1%, it will probably be something like that today as well. But at least... 
Look at this, we've got a nice candelabra right outside the railway station of Birobijan. So that means that actually we're in the right place. According to Wikipedia, one of the main reasons why Jewish resettlement was unsuccessful here in the Russian Far East was because of the weather, of the really harsh weather. So it was really difficult back in the day to, you know, actually keep people living here. Well, I don't blame them if the landscapes around the town of Birobijan look like this. And this is the house of culture of Birobijan here in the Jewish Autonomous Oblast. It doesn't look too dissimilar from the one that we saw in Vorkuta, does it? But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if my eyesight is not failing me right now, I believe it has its own twist to it. Let me just get closer. There you go, another confirmation that we are in the right place, indeed. Another sign that we are in the Jewish Autonomous Oblast. There you go, it says Garadskoi Dvarets Kulture, House of Culture of the Town in Russian and then here Yiddish this is actually my first time ever coming into contact with the Yiddish language it's very singular and the Jewish Autonomous Oblast of course is the only place across the entirety of Russia where you have signs, bilingual signs in Russian and Yiddish interesting there you go here as well you have the name of the street in Russian, Ulitsa Sholam Al Yehema, and the equivalent in Yiddish. And it's just very interesting because if you think about it, at the end of the day, Russia and Israel are the only countries in the world where Yiddish is an official language. Of course, for Russia, that is true only and strictly for the Jewish Autonomous Oblast, but still. There you go, and you also have the sign about this place and this building and you can add English to the mix along with Russian and Yiddish. Uh, ah, Russian? No, I'm not Russian. Ah, I'm Italian. Italian? Italian. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. David, my name is Daniel. Daniel? Daniel? Uh, Pavel. 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 Yes, very nice. Ah, you... Потому что я хотел узнать и познакомиться с еврейской культурой, знаете? А, да, да, понял, понял. Да, да, только здесь, э, только здесь, на Дальнем Востоке России. Но я знаю, что мало еврейцев осталось да, здесь. Да, всего 1% в России еврейской основы. 1%? Да, у, да. Так я думал, поэтому, да. Но все равно интересно смотреть да, языки, да, знаки да. И, и что еще? И канделабры тоже. Всего вам хорошего. Да, взаимно, удачи. Да. Alright, as I was saying, as I was just about to say, there's a tiny little bit of snow here on the main street of Birobijan. <laughs> Look at this. And just a couple of blocks away from the house of culture, I found a synagogue. Look at this. You see the Star of David. Just making sure I don't get run over by this car right here. But yeah, I think this must be a synagogue. I'm not sure. But what I would like to see if we can maybe get inside. I mean, we didn't come this far just to, you know, come this far. Hello. How do you say hello in Yiddish? That's one thing that I want to learn today for sure. Well, oh, the gate is actually open. All right. I mean, if the gate is open, I guess we can get inside. Можно? Да? Oh, that's why it looked so confusing from the other side. That was the rear entrance. Whereas here, you see, it's much clearer. This is probably a Jewish center funded by the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee. Anyone around?
first we see I don't usually interrupt the narration like this, but I now have to explain something that will become relevant in a minute. At this point, a middle-aged man in a camo suit came out of the front door of the building. Without saying a word, he lit up a cigarette. I introduced myself to him, but he didn't seem very willing to have a chat. He decided to almost completely ignore my questions on where to look for the Jewish people of Birobijan and dismissed me in a quite rude manner. That guy was absolutely freaking amazing. I asked him, I told him that I came here as a tourist to learn more about Jewish culture and he was like, okay. <laughs> and I said, look, where can I learn more about Jewish culture? And he was like, I don't know. Where can I meet Jewish people? I don't know. <laughs> but at least I found out that this is indeed the synagogue. Okay, so something really weird just went on. You know that guy who would not answer my questions, right? He was the Akhranik of the place, he was the security guard. When I entered the synagogue, he told me that I wasn't supposed to enter the synagogue because it was past opening times. And I was like, okay, I'm really sorry. I thought I could visit this place just because, you know, I'm really interested in learning about Jewish culture here in Russia. And he said, no, you can't. I'm calling the police and I was like, wait, what? what? I'm leaving, just chill out, man. So basically, I was kicked out of the synagogue, of the only synagogue here in Birobijan. Oh, I can't believe it. I feel bad. I feel really bad being kicked out out of religious places like synagogues. Also because I really wanted to visit the synagogue. What else am I going to do here in Birobijan? Well, there's one thing that I can do. Try out this Yevrieskaya Kuchnia, this Jewish restaurant, which is on Ulitsa Lenin, if you can see there, right next to the synagogue I was just kicked out of. Yeah, maybe let's try out some Jewish food at least. All right, so this video is turning into a big failure. I wanted to title this video something like Looking for Jewish people in Siberia, but instead I will have to title it Looking for Jewish people in Siberia failing. So the only thing that I can do is just have some Jewish food. Really, I'm having some farshmak. I'm not even sure that's Jewish, but that's what the waitress told me. So I'm going to go ahead with it. It's difficult to hide the disappointment though. Alright, so according to Wikipedia, Farshmak is indeed Jewish. <laughs> I feel bad for not fully trusting the waitress, but anyway, good. I'm having myself some Jewish Farshmak and some random tea. Oh, when you're sad and when you feel like you're failing in life or when filming YouTube videos, food is always the answer. Да, 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 да. Зато если я не могу посещать эту синагогу, зато у меня была а, вкусная еврейская еда. So I haven't given you guys an update on where I am in a long time. So just to give you guys the idea, I'm around 6,000 kilometers away from Moscow, and still I'm in the same country. Russia is huge, man. However, I'm really close to Beijing. Peking, 1,600 kilometers, and of course, Tel Aviv, just for reference, almost 8,000 kilometers. So, there you go. Do a bit of a triangulation and you'll figure out where I am. The name of the city of Birabijan derives from the fact that the city was founded on the banks of two separate rivers in this part of Russia, the Bira and the Bijan. Hence, Birabijan, and this is one of the two. Jewish Lenin, ha, that's a big one. Hello, 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 guys. We set out from Khabarovsk on a train coming here in order to look for the Jewish community of Russia here in the Jewish Autonomous Oblast. However, we didn't find anyone of Jewish descent and we got kicked out of a synagogue. But anyway, you know what they say when you're doing any kind of research, having no significant outcome is an outcome in itself. So, having said that, it was definitely cool. 
I don't think there's any other video on YouTube from the Jewish Autonomous Oblast in Russia. So that means if there's anyone else crazy enough to be interested in the Jewish Autonomous Oblast, they're definitely going to watch my video, even though it's shit. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye.